Hello, hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador, and we are happy to say this week's internet is working much better than last week's. <laughs> I went back to watch the episode and I was like blurry, not blurry, not, you never know what's going to happen. But today, so far, fingers crossed, we are live and we're doing great. So it's so nice to see you all and wait to see. I'm not even going to waste any time because Kim has so many things. How many of you have a wedding dress? Or maybe somebody gave you a wedding dress or you got a great deal at one of those thrift shops. Uh, I think Kim said the 80s dress. She's wait till you see what she does with this. So gather up your supplies. You're going to want to save this. We are live on Facebook and YouTube. So you're going to want to save it because she has so many tips and tricks as always. But this one for the wedding season is going to be stellar. So welcome everyone. And let's say hi to Kim Montanese. Kim, how are you? Hey, Angela. Good. How are you? I'm so excited for this Woo. because this is like, this is kind of the start of the wedding season. You don't think of it because it's usually like June and July. I have friends that get, most of my friends get married in September and October because it's not hunting season, <laughs> but <laughs> hunting or fishing, but the summer is just so perfect for that. And I just glanced at some of your things. I, this is going to be so much fun. Thank you. I hope so. I actually, just a personal note, I have two weddings coming up. So, oh. yeah, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of hoping for a beach wedding. So some of my colors are a little bit beachy. I have nothing to say about any of this, <laughs> but um, I just thought, well, you know, I'm doing these samples anyway. I might as well just use my colors that I want. So I'd like to start with, um, if there's anybody that would like to, you know, kind of weigh in here, if you have, if you have, um, a grandma wedding dress, a mom wedding dress, an aunt wedding dress, or something where you think it's really pretty or it has really pretty elements on it, but you're not wearing it for your wedding. Okay. I get that. Right. I was going to bring a picture of my wedding dress, which is all, I'm not going to take it out because we paid a lot of money to have it sealed <laughs> for my two girls who there's no way they're ever wearing that dress ever, ever. <laughs> my granddaughters, they're never going <laughs> to. It'll be found in, you know, I don't know, some archaeological dig one day. But anyway, um, but, but, there's a lot, but there's a lot of things you can do with parts of the wedding dress. So and also I'm, I have some stuff here with uh, jewelry. Like my grandma had some really big gaudy jewelry and I was able to turn it into like the headpiece of a veil. There's mm -hmm. different ways you can do that. But the simple things you can do starting off right now are if you're having a shower or you're giving a shower, there's stuff that's built into your scan and cut right now today. You don't have to load anything. You don't have to do anything different. But if you have the scan and cut, um, let me just start with this. I made this this morning, actually. I was thinking about it. It's an envelope and I haven't glued it together yet, but it's, it's very pretty. And you can actually put this back on the scan and cut mat. You can address it using the pen holder. And then on the inside is your little insert. You can write save the date. You can use these for your thank you gifts. You can put these for your table, uh, you know, your table numbers at your reception. So many different things. And this was right out of the scan and cut this morning with nothing extra added. Do you see my blue colors? I love it. I'm hoping for a beach wedding. Um, the other <laughs> thing is once you get to your wedding, your wedding day or your shower day, um, my husband is Italian. So we've always had those little candied almonds and you put them in a like a little tool uh, thing with a ribbon on it. But we also have these built into our scan and cut. Isn't that cute? I love those. It's Wasn't that? On the scan and cut, was that one of the projects that came with it? If Because I think a lot of people open the scan and cut and don't pay attention. That was one of the first projects. That was the cutest thing. My nieces wanted to make it in every color. <laughs> this is the one that I made first. So it comes with the paper. You stick it. So you're, you stick it on the mat and you're instantly successful. I couldn't believe it. It's like, oh my gosh, all I did was follow the directions and there it is. I have a daughter getting married. All right. So um, so this littler one I did this morning. And here I have 
I used my pen holder to write Scott and Hannah. That's one of the weddings. Oh, Scott. that's cute. And, and I, the handwriting is so good because it looks like your handwriting, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. I mean, and you could do your own handwriting and do it if you wanted to, but I just didn't, I didn't want to do that. And then here's some extra little tags that you can use for other things. The other thing I made um, was this wine bottle holders. Scott and Hannah forever. And this was a heat transfer vinyl. And I just put it in this little canvas bag and you can put these on your table at the reception. This is a uh, sparkling grape juice. You can have one of these at each place setting. You can have wine or champagne or whatever you want. Um, again, with a little tag. And also a lot of my family members are very eco-friendly. So they're always looking for ways to enhance their surroundings and take care of the planet. So what I would probably do is put a potted, uh, some a dirt with some, or where's my brain going today? A pot with some <laughs> dirt in it. And then put a tomato plant and a basil plant and have that all fluffy coming out the top with a pretty bow on the side and have those all around the table. And then you wouldn't actually even need a um, centerpiece. And then your guests could take them home and, you know, plant them in their yard and have beautiful tomatoes all year. So, so that was my table decoration idea. So then moving on, um, this is one idea. I just love this. If you have if you have your grandma's handkerchiefs or your grandpa's or whatever you have, you can embroider them and hand them out to your guests. This one says happy tears only. Oh, oh, and I, I see the color, the color scheme going, but you could make it in blue, something you, yeah. borrowed, something new, something blue. <laughs> exactly. So you could do anything. And there's so many poems. If you look online, there's beautiful poems about um, you used to pat his little head and now I hold his hand, you know, like the, the thank you to the mother-in-law for giving this great son to you. And, you know, all these things, I started getting all like teary reading them. But um, anyway, so this is another thing you can do and hand them out. And they can keep these if you like. You can also get these at events. You know, like we go to a lot of events and sometimes they have these just stacked up and they're not very expensive. So you could get these and just have a big basket of them folded and in a basket and have the little flower girl handing them out. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be so cute. I have a feeling half the people here are all teary right after that. So I know someone's going to ask, when they're looking, if, if they don't have a handkerchief, maybe they gave them all away or they never had one and they want to go to a secondhand shop or, oh. as, as you mentioned, an event where they have um, exactly uh, blanks. Is there anything special they should look for? Does it matter if it's cotton or linen or? I don't, just... not in my opinion. Um, this one is all cotton and I bought these at an event. I bought these at an event. It's all cotton. This is cotton. I have lots and lots of them that have the colors on the outside, you know, the flowers and they're real soft. And what I would do though, is use the real thin thread because they're very light. And I've used um, our brother's stabilizer. It's a lightweight, sticky backed um, wash away. Adhesive backed water soluble stabilizer. So I put this in the hoop and then just washed it out and then just pressed it after it was, you know, rinsed out. Nice. So, so that was my solution to that. And they can, as you can see, I mean, they came out really pretty. Here's the back. Beautiful. So, um, uh, Sherry said she wants to make her own lace. I agree, Sherry. That could be fun too. <laughs> I agree. Oh, and I'm going to get to that. Sherry, remind us later. There's something I want to show you. You know what, I'll show you now because I haven't gotten to the dresses yet. So the other thing I was going to talk about, let me get over here, are these shoes. Oh, my. So this is more crafty, actually. This is not really sewy unless you make your own lace. But we saw, my daughter and I saw this veil. It was in a picture online. 
And along the bottom hem of the veil, it said, it, there was a whole big poem, but the part I remember that was just across the back that the audience can see is till death do us part. <laughs> I said, maybe don't put that part like prominently. But that's kind of, you know. <laughs> but anyway, you can embroider on tulle. And then you can, you know, you can have that right on your veil. You can do lace. You can, there's a lot of things in the XP that are already built in these big, like lacy patterns that would be beautiful on tulle. And again, you would just do that on a, a lightweight um, adhesive back stabilizer and then just wash it out. Um, you could do it on the back of the veil. You could do it at the bottom of your skirt on your dress if you like. There's so many ways to use that. It's just beautiful up the sleeve if you have a sleeve on your dress. But these are done with um, these are done with lace that was cut off of a wedding dress. And oh, then that's beautiful. And then it was just stuck, you know, with that gluey stuff. That's and then, beautiful. And then they looked horrible. It took a couple days. You just stick pins in it and you wait for it to dry and you just keep sticking it on and putting more of the glue and sticking the pins. And then finally, when it's all nice and um, settled, then I do like a white spray paint, like a, um, you know, the base coat. And then I sprayed these red, obviously, and these are blue. I'm still pitching for blue. And then there's all different ways that you can just touch the high points of this to make it kind of stand out and look kind of grungy. So this was a metallic wax and you get it on your hands. It comes in a tube and you just kind of rub it. And um, I've seen these two where you can embroider or write on the back. I did a pair of shoes one time where I had the bride and the groom write their name. And I did that down the heel and I had one on one side and then mirror imaged it. So it was on both sides and then coming down the heel of the way. Oh, wedding. that would look good. Uh, Cheryl wants to know, are, did, you, did you use, well, you said use wax. Can you use Mod Podge on that? Yes. Not a I'm, brother product, guys. But. That's not a brother product. I wasn't going to say that, but that's, yes. I, I just totally, after I said it, I was like, wait a minute. I know. <laughs> not a brother I, product. And I'm usually the one that says it and goes, oh, but no, that's <laughs> exactly what I used. Yes. So Kim, I have a question for you. Yes. I uh, recently went on a cruise and I thought of you. Can you see this picture? Oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, my it's god. like six six thousand pairs of shoes. Here's a better one for you. They're all like painted oh, and I love it. it was a display. And I was like, oh my gosh, Kim needs one of these in her house. <laughs> no though, I would cut it off even at the thighs and flip it over and use it for a table, put like a glass top oh, on it. I knew you would come up with something good for that. <laughs> so so anyway, if anybody's into this. <laughs> <laughs> this is another thing you can do with your lace. You just cut it off, you lay it down here, and you use the product that's not made by brother. <laughs> and just let it dry and then trim it off and you keep trimming and pinning. Um, and eventually it will stick. So that's been a lot of fun. And you just did that because I know there's some people here like I've never done this. You just cut off lace from your dress and put it along the side or embroidered lace if you embroidered it and yep. just and it, it stayed on there how long do you let it dry anything like that yeah so I, I put on the big pieces first i don't worry about like the little swirls right away but i get i get like the main part if i wanted that part on the heel i would do that first and just let the rest of it hang there and then after that and just pin it you have to use really tiny quilt pins I made the mistake of using big pins, like thicker pins, thinking that it would really hold better. But then I couldn't get them out. I had to go get pliers and, you know, yank it out and it left a hole. So used really skinny uh, pins and you're not going to use them ever again for anything else. You can keep using it for this, this technique, but you're not going to be able to use them because they're going to be all gooped up, you know, with, with glue. But yeah, you do the big part first. And once that starts uh, sticking, then you can move around to this part. Maybe you can see it. No, you can't really see it. Yeah, we can see it great like that. Okay. Perfect. And then 
day after day, you just keep checking it and it's going to get tacky and sticky. And then you kind of stick it down again and put another pin. When you get one section that's really nice, just take the pins out. You're done there. And then eventually you'll get to the little curly parts that will be last. And um, you'll see it, it. It is a process. It takes a long time, you know, to get it all stuck on there. But it looks like a porcupine. It gets all brown. Kind of, it looks terrible in the process. But then once you put that white coat on, like a gesso coat, it ends up looking really like, oh, wow. I've done Hold, so those, shoes up. Hold those shoes up again for anybody who's like, what are you guys talking about? So I see there's a few people that just roamed in a little late. Oh, my gosh. These are so cute. So how many days would you say would be the total process? The whole process, maybe 10 days. Wow. Because that's not the end of it. Um, after you get all of your silver or gold rub, they have, you can paint them silver and do like a blue rub or a verdigris or, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can get this rub on here. But after that's all done, then I stuff newspaper in them and then put them on a, like a board and take them outside on a nice day. So you can't do this in the winter. You have to put this on a board on a nice day and then spray probably 10 or 15 coats of polyurethane on them. Wow. And then allow several hours in between so that they're not sticky each time. Um, I did that partially because these were traveling and I didn't want them to get beat up. So this, these are better, probably better protected than my backyard furniture. <laughs> they probably float. They probably, you know, you could blow them up and they would be fine. You know, I can see so many people right now. The Brother Soy Embroidery Machines are going to be embroidering names, little, um, like my husband and I had our secret messages engraved in each one of mm -hmm. our rings. You know, we both had the same, we wrote the same thing, which was amazing. But oh. I could see them on the back of shoes. I mean, this is going to be, so, I actually, I could see this on like shoes that I wear all the time. I love my heels. <laughs> I love them. And uh, I, Kim. Oh, you gave me some really good ideas right here. <laughs> so it's really fun. So if you do it, like this was lace that was already made. If you're going to make your own lace, though, oh yeah, get a tool that kind of matches the shoes. Like I've okay. done it the nude color shoes. Try to get like a, a nude color. You know how tool comes in all the shades. Try to get something real close to the color of the shoes. And then as you're, you embroider... Um, and you're sticking it on there, you're you're kind of trimming away the tool that's sticking out. You don't want to stick all that tool on there. So, so kind of cut away around the edges and get as much of the tool off as you can. And yeah, um, kind of like when I make trim, like on my jackets, I use tool for that, embroider yeah. the lace and then cut yeah. off the, so my jackets could match my shoes now. Yes, oh. yes. <laughs> This is going to be so much fun. I don't even have a wedding to go to, and I'm going to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the nice thing is you can do this on anything. You can do this on um, lunch and learn. Oh, what's, I don't know what that is. Um, I'm, I, you can do this on the wooden purse blanks. Yeah. Where you can paint the purse. You can, you can uh, glue fabric down and then put the tool over it. You can do it on antique chest. We have an antique French chest. And I wrote the French words in the fancy letters. And it looks like it's stitched onto the front of the wooden drawers. Oh, so, my gosh. Um, that would be great. Oh, Esther. Oh, my gosh. You're adding more to our creative. This might have to be like a whole summer project, Kim. Now they want matching bags. <laughs> all right. Ne next time. <laughs> okay. So... So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. It's been really fun. Um, I have more of these shoes, but these are the wedding shoes. I'm voting for these because I want a beach wedding. <laughs> okay. So the next thing, I went to the um, secondhand store. I do not have my mother's wedding dress. Nobody knows what happened to it. It was really pretty. It was like a 50s dress, you know, with a little tiny waist and the ivory satin and off the shoulder. It was just gorgeous. And if I were as tiny as my mom, I would have worn it probably. But we can't find it now. It was in a big potato chip tin thing and nobody knows what happened to it. So I went to 
a secondhand store and I bought. <laughs> so oh funny. my. Look at that. I bought this. That's a big dress. Uh, that, I mean, not big. It's just a lot of fabric. I can see a lot of shoes and clutches coming out of that. <laughs> All right. It has holes in it already. I've already used some of the stuff on it. And if you see see here, it has really pretty sleeves. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah. So I use this sleeve. And instead of having, and okay, my bouquet is very large. Nobody's going to have one this big. But instead of having, you know, how they have the lilies and then the elegant bow with the stems hanging out, I use the sleeve to, to create the little, you know, the little bottom part that you hold it with. Oh, that's beautiful. What a good idea. So beach wedding again. And not only that, but just as another thought, there we go. There's your table decoration. Oh, that's perfect. So there's so many things you can do with just the sleeve. You can also cut the sleeve off. This is the, but isn't that this kind of dastardly, right? <laughs> that's where the sleeve is. <laughs> But you can take that sleeve then and stitch it onto like a t-shirt, onto a jacket. Look at this beautiful sleeve back here. Can you get a... Oh, that's gorgeous. And it has the little buttons on the back. Oh, the little tiny ones? The little tiny with the loops. Oh, so I did one... that on an outfit. It ruined my nails for the holidays. It took me hours and hours and hours to make those. So I would just take those buttons and save them. Yes. Well, I would just cut them off if I wasn't using the whole thing because they're already sewn on. I would just leave them right on there. And in fact, on this one, this was a neckline from another wedding dress. And oh. on the, can you see the back part here? Wait, I have to find a place where you can see. Move it over. We can see. You're right in the center. We see perfect. Right there. And right here were those little buttons. And I used that whole line of buttons and loops and just cut them off and use them on something else. Um, you can do the same thing with your wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on the back here, Here's this beautiful lace, and I, I kind of really like the way this lace is, and there's a zipper, and it goes down. And if you wanted a more plain dress, there's no reason you can't just cut right down that and save just that part and layer it over or put more tulle around it. Um, the other thing is don't be afraid of these. I mean, you're going to spend $25 on these, sometimes $10. And they're really, a lot of this is just basted together. So hand basted, not even on the machine. So you can get rid of these. You can have a nice clean line to cut down. You also have gobs of lace. This one has um, almost nine yards of this lace. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. It was like, 8.7 something. Isn't it pretty? That's beautiful. So I'm going to show this um, attached to a veil. So even if you're, again, if you're not wearing the heirloom dress, you can wear parts of it. So what I've done here, this is actually the veil that came with that dress. <laughs> Anybody want this before I tear it apart? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, Kim, you're hilarious. Going fast. Here we go. Going fast. I'm watching all the comments. Everyone said they're headed to the thrift store pretty soon because they want to gather some of these. I just text my mom. 
do you have your dress still? Because she asked me like a month ago, do you want this it? And after all these years, and I was like, no, I don't want no. it. But now oh, I do, no. because now I could use this for all of my nieces getting married. I mean, they're only five right now. That gives me a long time to get started. <laughs> right. And not only that, but you can make baptismal gowns. You can use the satin, oh. tone, the ring pillows. Um, right. Well, oh, okay, I take it back. Allie is, Allie, are you 13 now? Uh, so I might have to get a move a little faster for stuff like that. <laughs> well, hopefully not too soon if she's 13. Okay. So that quickly, <laughs> I was able to demolish that whole veil. So. <laughs> Anne knows me well. She's like, yes, yeah, start now, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm always rushing to get graduation quilts finished. Because when the child is born, I know I have 18 years to get it done, right? <laughs> and I'm still working on it the weekend before the graduation party. Okay, so I'm just cutting this off. Here's the veil. Of course, I would press this, just kind of steam it. Let me pull it back so you can see what I'm doing here. I would just steam it so it looked prettier. I probably would turn it this way. Oh, that's pretty. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. See if I can lift it up. That's beautiful. Look at all the detail in that. I mean, and, you and that's just on a piece of, uh, just a piece of tool. Yep. It's just on an old, this is an old headpiece that came with this $25 dress. And this still looks not bad if anybody's interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this could tuck right into your into your bun on your, you know, on the if you have your hair kind of up a little bit, tuck that right into your bun and have this beautiful grandma's lace on your veil. You could do it around your sleeve or, you know, whatever really you want to do with it. There's tons and tons of this lace on these, on these gowns. So, wow. What a great idea. You know, that hair clip itself. Uh, I went to buy one because I was trying to do something fun for fishing. It was kind of a funny little, um, like, I don't even know what you'd call it. Those hair clips are like 15 bucks if you want just a plain old hair clip. So I, I never even thought of going to check those out to add to the stash isn't it crazy yeah and then oh here comes the fun part okay so then if you have the old jewelry like this oh uh, mom i hope you're watching this we just went through her jewelry box so <laughs> so i mean some of this stuff you're not going to be wearing out in public right but when you start collaging it together on a headband, this was from um, a thing I used to do called Almost Steampunk Junk. And it's just, a, all it is, is a headband, a cheapy little headband. And I stitched all this stuff onto a piece of felt and then used a hot glue gun and glued it onto here and then put a piece of felt on the inside. And then if you wanted to attach the veil, you could either put the veil on first and then put this over it, or before you hot glue this down, you could stitch the veil right into the middle, you know, the inside of your, of your, of your band. That's so, beautiful. So these were, and then here's one with a clip. You could also, you know, you could do the little, hair clip as well but these are all leftover jewelry heirloom jewelry pieces shells you know special things there's a little key in there all these different things that i've collected actually when we did the class my plan was to get rid of all this stuff that i had and the supply list said just bring a small ziploc baggie with your own junk to use or trade <laughs> with your own with your own junk was it worded just like that so i ended up with more junk than i started with because they took <laughs> you know we were sharing and trading but i ended up with more junk than i started with so 
<laughs> oh, Kim. The, I have an idea for the rest of your junk there. Yes. I, I, I mean, I, you, this is so creative that my mind is just thinking of so many things. Scan and cut, uh, embroidery, adding a beautiful name with tool, and putting it on a beautiful picture frame, like getting yes. it all kind of. Yes. It would all go together. It would all, all go together. Junk. I know. <laughs> I know once you start looking at what we have the capability of doing with our stuff, with our equipment, there's just no end to it. It's just crazy. Oh, um, yeah. So these are some of the things that I've done. Now, none of this stuff went together. There are all different crazy colors on this. So you just take, I mean, the, this is a piece that's not very attractive, actually. So uh, where'd, the, where'd the thing go? So you can take, for instance, this stuff, and this is the metallic wax. And oh. you can take this little thing that's all red and whatever the colors and just turn it into gold just by rubbing this over a couple times. You can put silver on there, you know, whatever color you want. You can spray paint it. There's all different ways that you can get this all to go together and look unified to put on your, that's a little bit. Better. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Julie, Julie says it's not junk period. Treasures currently not, not in use. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I'll warn you, you're going to be wearing this. Do not do this on the morning of your wedding because you're going to be wearing that for about a month. <laughs> so, so those were just a few of the, of the ideas that I had. Um, now, when I make the veil, there's different ways you can do it. I like these little wire ones. Because oh, these yeah. are room in between to put your, your hair pins. So let me put these away. Let me get rid of all this stuff and I'll show you how to lay the veil out. So you'll be able to either make your own. Barbara Jones says she just bought a package of hair bands and overpacked jewelry box. Barbara? I think you're going to have a lot of ideas here. A lot, Barbara also said, and like a handful of others, says your hair looks great today. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but just now that you have that gold and silver on your hands, don't touch your hair. Okay. <laughs> well, that might make it fun. <laughs> so, so here's the veil I made the other day. It's a very long one. I made it with the silver comb. And this one I made so that this part kind of folds over and gives it another layer. And I'd like to just point out a couple of things about tool. Okay, we don't need this one anymore. Is that it comes in all different colors. And if you're doing something like this gown, you can see that this one probably is the way to go. It even has little gems on it. Oh, yeah. And then this one is pretty white. I don't know if you can really tell there. This one was kind of in between. And another trick I learned when I made my sister's wedding dress, she wanted a white wedding dress. And, and it had, um, we did the lace thing, like with the lace border and I attached the lace border onto the tool and it was uh, the outer layer was white, but then I put a layer of ivory underneath it so that you could really see the white. It kind of gave it a little contrast because white on white didn't really show the pretty lace, you know, that was on the, on the hem and across the top. So we did a layer of the ivory underneath. So you could actually see it. it. And it didn't look ivory. You couldn't tell. It just gave it a little bit more um, depth on the skirt. So, um, I mean, this one has the sparkles. So when I'm getting ready to make a veil like this, I just, this is so simple. And you can look this up online. There's tons of them, tons of the, um, videos online you pick the one you like and do that and you see I put down um, black today because otherwise you wouldn't see this against the white okay where's the scissors 
So you measure your length. And I'm just going to start right about, right about over here. And I'm just going to make a curve and go all the way across to the end. And then, if you'd like, this will be a shorter veil. If you'd like to go to the machine, I have the machine set up for a base. Angela, you want to do that or should I just talk through it? No, I can bring your machine up. Okay. Head on. Oh, I'll, I'll uh, I think you're... My phone go off? It. I think it went to sleep. Just, just hit it. Just hit it and it'll... <laughs> I know, Deborah. Aren't these fun ideas? I'm gonna be. I'm actually everything, Mom. If you're, oh, she just texted me back. She's not watching. You need to watch, Mom, because when you watch the replay, everything I told you last month, I did not want. I changed my mind. <laughs> okay, can you see me now, Angela? Yep. Let me bring you up, and I think I got the weird muting thing gone. Can I hear you? Can you hear me? Perfect. Yep. Okay. So. The first thing I'm going to do is turn the machine on. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that would help. <laughs> and while we're waiting, I already have my um, move it foot. I'm going to wake up the machine. I'm going to tell it okay. Please wait a while. Now, if I was doing this, um, I mean, I could do this with a contrasting thread. But I'm going to do it with white thread today. Oh, see my fingers? Yay. I'm going to touch sewing. I'm going to touch utility stitch, category one, stitch number three. And for the length, I'm going to make it as big as it'll go, which is 5.0. I'm going to lift up the foot. I'm going to open up my bobbin case. And I'm going to take out a nice length of the bobbin thread. Wrap it around the hook a little bit and leave it hanging out. And then put it back in. And then I'm going to take the top thread, make sure I have a nice long thread as well. Okay, find my end here, find the straight end. I'm gonna start just a little bit off the edge. Put the foot down. Okay, you reach my daddy long legs under there to find the pedal. And then I'm just going to sew all the way across the top edge. not going to cut the thread. I'm going to pull it out and leave a nice long tail. Cut the thread on the side of the machine. And then I'm going to come down here and grab the bobbin thread. And I'm just going to start pulling it all the way across, just gently. Pull it all the way across and then go to the other side, find the bobbin thread, which is probably going to be thinner.
you know, if you're doing the headband, instead of the um, little comb, you'd want to start measuring at this point. Just kind of spread it out and see exactly where your length is going to be. This way, almost done. Okay, I don't want to tug on that too much. I'm afraid I'll break the string, but or the thread. So there we go, a nice gathered veil. And then Angela, I'm going to come back over to the other side. All right, while she's coming back to the other. Uh, do you have any questions for her or comments? Leave them there. We are live. I see some of you rolling a little bit late. You're going to definitely want to save this and go back and watch from the beginning because she had so many good ideas. Uh, and my mom just texted and said she's going to watch it now. <laughs> and the box of jewelry she's not going to get rid of. We've got some great ideas planned now. <laughs> okay. So now you have your veil created. So now you want something to connect it to. So I just cut a long piece of the leftover tool. I'm going to lay it across the top of the comb and just start wrapping it around the comb. I put a piece across the top. That's going to be held down right here. And I'm just going to wrap it around a couple times and then come back over and do the rest of it. And you can move the little teeth out of the way, twist it a little. And this is where you're going to be sewing any of your embellishments on. You can sew embellishments to that, or you can just hide it all together. Just tuck it under your hair, um, your, your hairstyle. Tell your hairdresser exactly what you want. She'll hook you up. Okay. So we're just going to keep going around this. until that whole comb is covered. And then depending on how large you want your headpiece to be, how large or how small, you can either sew the jewelry right to that tool that I'm twisting on here, or you can have a secondary piece that you stitch on, you know, like some of these other pieces that I've used. If you've cut pieces off of another dress, you can stitch that on there, stitch some pretty lace on there and create your own headpiece. I know I was shocked when I got married. My headpiece, this was in 1984. It was like $400. I'm like, you gotta be kidding. <laughs> $450? $400. And all it was was like a comb with like two little sprigs of white silk, like lilies of the valley. I was so disappointed. I was like, <laughs> I could have made hey, that. Hey, Karen, that's a good idea. Um, let's say you want to make a prom dress from an existing wedding oh. dress. Does this material die well? Well, oh, it, it, Karen, it depends. It depends. <laughs> I think, uh, do we say jinx? I think we said that at the same time. It depends, Karen. It depends. I would try it, though. If you have one that you don't care about, I would go ahead and try it. But you have to make sure that the dye matches the fabric type. So yes. I dye a ton of silk, and that's a whole different kind of dye that you use than if you have a dress that has polyester in it. So, Karen, check the label. And if you message me, well, uh, you're in the Fashion Sewing Club. I think it's in there. Just send me a text. Uh, there's a company you can check, and it tells you what dye to use with what fabric. It's not Brother, though. You embroider with Brother and dye the fabric. <laughs> yes. Well, and the other thing, too, is, Angela, um, I'm going to show you something kind of having to do with weddings. How much time do we have? Okay, we're good. Um, 
you can spray paint fabric too. <laughs> if you have lace, um, I was, uh, my daughter bought a wedding gown to use as a, um, as a Halloween costume. And first we tea dyed it in the laundry tub. We put coffee grounds and tea and like we buried it in the backyard and then we rinsed it out and it was all brown and it was like the Bride of Frankenstein. And she tore it. After we did that with it, then I was able to, um, it was lacy kind of. And then we were able to spray paint it kind of like ombre spray paint it uh -huh. with blues and greens. And we turned it into kind of seaweed and we created this whole other thing that looked like seaweed. It was for a mannequin. It was for a show. And um, it, it was beautiful. And wow. Thought, now that oh, sounds fun. I think was, we all want to go to Kim's house and play for like a week. That is That would be so beautiful. So, I mean, you're not limited to just, um, you know, fabric dye necessarily. You can use other kinds of, you can use fabric paint. There's uh, real soft, soft-handed uh, fabric paints that you can use, and there's fabric spray paint and different things like that. So, oh wait, I have to add a new one what? on my list to do for summer with a crinkled polyester knit top uh, with the new printer from Brother. Yes, yes. Well, actually, either or, but the one uh, I just. I can't even think of the name. Oh my gosh, it just it just left my mind. Wait, What's the one that you heat press with? <laughs> oh, the sublimation. The sublimation, because you could have a really yeah. cool print and then yeah. press it onto that fabric. Yes. And a lot of those dresses are polyester, which would tie yeah. in perf. Oh, wait, you know, I just thought of something, Kim. I yeah. just had a message yesterday. Speaking of the new printers and all the new stuff from Brother, Artsphera is having a great celebration. So if you have not downloaded the app, you'll want to because right now they're doing one big special where you get a month free. Uh, that means you get to use all the really cool stuff. I mean, they have a lot of stuff, but you get to use the paid stuff for free for a whole month. And so if you're getting ready for wedding season, there's a ton of embroidery, a ton of printing in there, a lot of stuff that would tie in with what Kim's doing today. Exactly. And prom. I mean, I, I didn't even think about prom season. So, okay, what did I do with my mail? Here it is. So now we have this comb has the top part covered. And then we're just going to lay down the gathered veil. And we're just going to stitch it, just hand stitch it. And then here's your little veil. Wow. And then you can go ahead and add your lace or whatever, you know, whatever else you want that you saw there earlier. Um, another thought, since you since we brought up about painting, this is part, it almost looks like leather, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Looks this like is an skin. It does. This is part of this wedding dress. So I cut this off and I spray painted it like copper on the back and then like gray and turquoise on the front. And then, I mean, here's what you can do with it, especially if you're a bride and it's springtime and it's still chilly outside. Okay, check this out. I mean, you could stitch this on, you could stitch appliques onto the sleeves. This is just a nice little coat to keep you warm while you're waiting for the photographer to get there. Um, Here's the other one. This is a sweater. Thought this would be pretty on the back of a sweater too. That's beautiful. And you could embroider bride, bride to be, Mr. and Mrs., you know, whatever. But um, this was an applique off of this dress. And the other thing is here's another wedding jacket. So it's, this was built, this is built into your XP. The oh, black. look how good that looks. With, I love it with the black. And then it's just a, it's just a white jacket with the buttons on it. These could be heirloom buttons. Could be anything really. Beautiful buttons. Here's some extra lace. Here's some heirloom lace at the bottom. I mean, if you're a modern bride or you want to wear like trouser pants, you could wear this with a tank top underneath. Um, oh, that's fun. Or just doing different embroidery on the back. 
so let me see. Let me look at all my stuff here. Did I talk about everything? Oh, no, no. <laughs> There's one more thing. How much time? Okay, a couple minutes. So, so <laughs> we're going to let you go because we want to see more. I mean, this is so inspiring. And <laughs> I see some of you asking about the Art Spira. Uh, there is, if you go into the app, there are videos in there. Uh, if you want to go back to some of the other shows, you can watch that. And I see somebody who said they can't log in anymore. Uh, reach out to Brother uh, and they can help you do that too. Oh so, God. all right, Kim, back to you. Okay. So this dress also, you can see this is very very 80s, right? But it has beautiful detail. I just love some of the detail on it. So again, don't be afraid to start picking this apart. It's just basted. See this right here? It's just basted on there. So I started picking this apart and I can use this whole front part for something else. But this is like a heavy satin and it's got a really nice a stitched line right here. So my plan is, because this has such a beautiful, it just had a really plain skirt. It's a very beautiful, light, plain skirt with an enormous train on the back. Yards and yards of train. So I was going to cut this at the waist, take this off, remake this, um, you know, this part, what's that called, Angela? Um, Not a gusset. What's the word? I'm thinking the bodice? No, this part. Oh. That goes from your waist to your hip, from here to here. Um, We'll have to ask the brother fans. I'm having, I yeah. can't think of it. I know, my brain won't, won't think of the word. But anyway, <laughs> so that's what I was thinking of here. And just have a super plain skirt. That's so light and airy. Maybe even take some layers out because there's several layers of the crinkly tool. Maybe take some of that out too. And then for the top part, do one of those little jackets that you can um, make like a little bolero jacket with the tool and the lace and just do like a tank top with spaghetti straps and then do the little jacket that buttons down the back. Oh, um, yeah. Karen said she'd cut below the peplum and add a pencil skirt. Oh, like a whole different top. Yes, you could use the skirt. You could use the top separately. That's. I think I'd have a hard time not taking all that tool and embroidering all of it. <laughs> I know. I know, but it's it's already on here, so that's my problem. This I'm lazy, so it's already on here, really nice. <laughs> and on the inside, it's all nice and neat in there. So I would I would have a hard time taking that off. But I probably would then embroider something more plain on there, make it more airy. And years ago, there was um, a woman, some of you who were in the, I think it's the ASG, years and years ago, they had a wedding dress on their, on their website where a mother made her daughter's wedding dress and she did all the embroidery in solar thread and it looked like it glow not what did glow that do the, not glow in the dark it stitches out white so it looked like just lace on satin when she was inside the church and then when she stepped outside of the church in the middle of the day the sunlight hit her wedding dress and in front of everybody it bloomed into full color Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, I could so, think of a lot of other applications for that too. That's yeah, cool. It's very cool. And I've, I've looked, I've tried to find it again and it hasn't been on there for years, but that is oh. always been in my mind. I want to make a jacket or something with that solar thread on it. So it's like, wait a minute, did you just change? It's like, no, same jacket. <laughs> That's cool. Has anybody here tried any of that? I'm just curious because I remember when that came out, it was just kind of a really big deal. Also, yeah. they have solar paints as well that would do the mm -hmm. same thing where they're white and then you go into the sun and they have colors. Yes. Uh, oh, and they have glow in the dark thread too. That's what I was thinking. The glow in dark. Barbara Jones says it's so wonderful. Makes me want to do renewal of vows. Too much work to find a new husband. He's this one's broken in. Yeah. Barbara Jones, get a divorce. <laughs> 
renewal of your vows, <laughs> renewal of your vows be perfect for you to make <laughs> refashion your dress, right? <laughs> Oh my gosh, there's so many fun ideas here. I have a feeling people are going to be going through their jewelry boxes. I've got so much. When I used to do fashion shows all the time, I always kept a lot of jewelry around because I might need to put a choker on or a bracelet of stuff that, you know, I probably won't wear now. I always wear the same stuff. So those are such good ideas, Kim. Well, I hope I hope this helps anybody that, you know, if you're going to a wedding, if you're give, producing a wedding, <laughs> if you're the bride, if you're the groom, the mother of the bride, mother of the groom, I mean, there's tons of tons of stuff we can do with our scan and cut and our machines that are they're just too fun. I think we covered so much. I just I'm really intrigued though about either painting the fabric or using the printer to print mm -hmm. your own, because you could print little messages and heat transfer that inside of a dress. Let me give you some more stuff to do, Kim. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I like the idea though of using the wedding gowns, even if you buy them for $25, of making christening gowns, and then you can embroider the baby's name and the date of the baptism or the date of the birth, or you can make baby quilts out of them. You know, just oh, there's yeah. so many things you can do. There's so much fabric on them. Yeah. You know what I love, though, is some I think some people, if they start embroidering and, you know, they feel like I don't know if I want to embroider on this really good fabric. I'm not sure that I'm good enough to do that. I, you are good enough to do that. You just have to know the right stabilizer. But if you're nervous about that, embroidering on the tool and using the tool as the applique is just a mm -hmm. no brainer. It's inexpensive. Well, free if you're taking it off of a dress. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Julie, thank you. I don't know why I can't think of sublimation today. It's just not in my mind. I'm thinking of the other printer behind me because I just did an update. <laughs> oh, oh, this yeah, sounds the, fun. The sublimation printer would be awesome to use for that. Oh, my gosh. It sure would be. Uh, yeah, V, I love this. She said she used solar thread in a teaching unit for third grade. They were amazed at the power of the sun. That would be the coolest project to do with your class. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been a fantastic episode. And for all of you watching, be sure to hit the like button and the heart button so brother knows that you love these shows. And uh, this was on YouTube. So the best way to watch this is to go back to YouTube or you can click share and you can email it to yourself with the link to save it. But also when you go back to Brother Sews or Brother Crafts, click on the live button. You can binge watch for days. This is episode 400 and I need my glasses for this. 20, 420. <laughs> That's a lot of episodes. <laughs> and if you're on Facebook, the easiest way, because they've changed their algorithm, click share to your own page, and then you can always go back to your page and watch this. You definitely want to share this with friends that have any parties coming up this summer, wedding or whatever, because my mind is just exploding with ideas, even for some of the birthday parties coming up. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm going to use a wedding dress for that, but the tool and all the other fun stuff. Kim, this was fantastic. Well, Angela, the other project is not wedding related, but it could be take the tool, like a, a prom dress or something that already has tool on it. And then you can embroider all your little random words all over the skirt, like party time, let's get going, you know, come on girls, girls night out or whatever. You could do that <laughs> all over the tool. Oh, and that would be fun. Like all different fonts. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, <laughs> all right. So we, we got to go, Angela, because i got to get busy now. You do, and I'll see you next month. I, uh, maybe we should just continue on this episode and expand on. <laughs> I think so. Some of the stuff could definitely slide over to the next episode. <laughs> Sounds good. So, Kim, until next time, this is super fun. Thanks All so of you watching, thank you for watching. Brother, thanks for letting us take over your page. And until next time, happy sewing, everyone. Bye.